I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, everyone ready? Indeed. Yark. Yark, indeed. Alright. Three, two, one. Good day, fellow geeks. On this week's episode of Geeks of Azeroth, we've got some shaking up in the uh, raiding community. Uh, something about the Warcraft movie. Uh, you know, something. And other such things on this week's episode of Geeks of Azeroth. Welcome to Geeks of Azeroth! Oh, welcome... Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Mike being weird. Welcome to the show, my name's Tarly. Um, sorry, you could tell I was very prepared for that intro there on the show. Um, but uh, let's let's talk to the other guys, the guys who are always with us. We've got Zul and Britza. How are you guys doing? Zul, it's been forever. We miss you, man. Yeah, I've been a little MIA for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> well, how have your last few weeks been in in or out of Azeroth? Um, well, <laughs> I haven't spent any time in Azeroth oh, or no. any other video games <laughs> for the last couple weeks. Um, had a lot of stuff kind of going on in my personal life. Um, things are good. They were just a little rough for a while there, but everything is good. I'm Really have to be back doing the show again. I've missed <laughs> doing it a lot, and we've and missed doing maybe you. Maybe I'll lot. be fine. Uh, what? what? Hmm. hmm. <laughs> Phrasing. <laughs> I think for people listening at home, Zul found out about Pokemon Go, and he had a mental breakdown. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I was pretty excited about that, and I am pretty excited about that. But doesn't come out till next year, so yeah. <laughs> I guess I better jump in pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> Please. I guess, um, yeah, everything with me is absolutely fine. I mean, I haven't had a chance to um, touch much more of Azeroth than I usually do, and that sounded really weird saying that. Um, really, really <laughs> On weird. This week's episode uh, of Touching Azeroth. Touching Azeroth. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a great show. No, that's next Valentine's. Next Valentine's. Um, but. Uh, similar, without sounding a bit like a sort of an echo, um, lots sort of going on in the background. So, haven't had much chance to play. But saying that, I'm still dragging, dragging my sorry backside through the legendary quest. Um, not feeling like it's being sped up. It's uh, still a bit grindy. But saying that, I've got past the um, oh, what's her face bit, orky stabby thing, lady thing. Uh, what's her name something how force i can't remember her name based That's on the description we... i think you're further than the two of us <laughs> have gotten yeah. a legendary <laughs> quest <laughs> looks like thrall but not thrall um but yeah no otherwise just generally just messing about a bit i've tried to do a bit of pvp but i haven't been playing around with mercenary um mm -hmm. just yet um no real reason just other than the fact that i have a horde character and i like playing horde so I'm happy, but other than that, it's pretty quiet. Nothing, nothing major happening. Although saying that, I am trying to um, look for a steady guild to start raiding Hellfire with. So hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be heavily involved with that. Hmm. But what about you, Tali? Oh, I, I, I've probably played the most WoW out of the three of us, I guess, over the last couple of weeks. Um, Not hard. <laughs> as our viewers can tell by uh, the shirt, I am dedicated Alliance now. <laughs> oh, I'm so disappointed. How are you disappointed, Britta? I mean, what's the sigh for? I know you play Alliance. I do, but all our main characters can get killed off in Legion, apparently. So <laughs> it's not going to be much left of the Alliance, I think. But Probably no, on, sure. on a serious note, I'm glad you've come over to the blue side. Right. <laughs> uh, just in time for me to join the red side. Um, I feel so, so alone. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lonely place to be, especially towards the, the town red. <laughs> yeah, with my own blood. Uh, no, but it's been exactly. good. I've been playing uh, playing mercenary mode, actually. You know, uh, my night elf getting converted to a troll. It's kind of weird, but whatever. Mm. <laughs> the better race, the better race. All right. 
Uh, it's having cool, awfully um... like Garrosh there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, but it's with trolls, so it's not. It's the fine. They're blue, <laughs> fuzzy, they're cute. It will do. <laughs> no, but it, it, it's been good times and wow. I've been playing a lot of StarCraft, though, as well. Uh, Legacy of the Void beta has been changing like every week, so it's it's keeping things interesting. No season four Diablo? Uh, hmm, I, I, I hopped in and played a monk for like five minutes and was like, I want to play StarCraft. <laughs> we see a, a few weeks ago when season four first started i did get really far in that maxed out a witch doctor uh i have almost the full Helltooth set and parcels of like every other witch doctor set there are and i was pretty easily dominating like torment seven or so <laughs> awesome you can carry me entirely through there we go Brilliant. we can we'll have, a, have a show zool carries us through torment. <laughs> <laughs> it's where me and Tali go away for the day and we got computers on. <laughs> yeah. Can you set follow in that game? Oh, that'd be brilliant. No. All right. Well, moving on to the first segment of the show, news of the week. Hey, we recording? Yeah. Okay. News of the week. That's right. It's time for news of the week. And we have scoured the internet looking for some kind of news related to World of Warcraft, and we were lucky enough to find some. It didn't like coming with us, though. It's, 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 <laughs> it's a really mellow way to start the show as well, actually. So yeah, it's kind of mellow. Let's pick up after this, I promise. Um, so, big news on the raiding community. Uh, Method, the, the number one raiding guild, they broke up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. Just like our favorite boy bands of the 90s. They broke up. <laughs> and uh, Taylor Swift has already said that they're never, ever getting back together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Taylor Swift may be actually one of the members joining the new guild. Uh, but she what? has yet. We've reached out to her for uh, for confirmation, and she has. I thought uh, it was going to be like, you know, Captain Mal and. <laughs> Uh, Jan and you know, oh that them. I thought they'd be part of this new guild that's forming. Well, that would be nice, but you know. I mean, just look at the name of the guild. I know. I mean, Chris Metzen wanted to join too, but you know, he he knew had too much yeah. information, so too much. You know, the, the uh, some of the the core members of Method have left and formed a new guild called Serenity. <laughs> yeah, so you want to talk about that a little bit further? Sure. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> Sko, who founded Method, uh, is still leading Method today, but he did confirm that many of the core members have left to form a new guild called Serenity on a different server. Um, the breakup came about for a few different reasons. One is that, I mean, look at how hardcore raiding has been for a while now. It's basically, there's not as many guilds pushing for it, there's not as many guilds in the race anymore. Mm -hmm. um, in their own words, they called it a two-horse race every single Yeah, expansion. they said it was them and Paragon. Mm. And so it kind of, it didn't have the same motivation behind everything. But another part of it was that the members were kind of losing faith in the leadership, it sounds like, of Method. And Method isn't just the WoW guild, they're like a larger gaming community. And so they were kind of losing faith in a lot of that, and they were kind of running a lot of stuff themselves, apparently, anyways. And so a bunch of them decided to leave and go form their own guild instead. Um, but Method is supposedly still around. They're still, they didn't say they were going to stop uh, top tier rating, they just have to rebuild. They haven't sent me an invite yet, though. Right. So, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm expecting that any day now. I'm sure my my like weeks and weeks of not logging in have hurt my <laughs> chances. Right, so. ch check your mailbox, man. You probably just have letters from Sko. Like, please, please join Method. Hey. We need you, Zul. <laughs> You're probably what caused the breakup, Zul. They were like, God, oh, Zul's just not going to join us. Zul's not on Geeks of Azeroth guild. anymore. I mean, maybe we should just break up as a guild. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But I I guess that do we want to talk about this this idea that. Yes, I could probably appreciate it's a, probably a two-horse, maybe a three-horse race every single expansion, but... But they want to make it a four-horse race. They want to make... Well, it's not... <laughs> you basically cut the horse in half, and the horse is... Each half the horse is still going to run as fast as the other two, probably. 
So that would be a very strange horse race at that point. Very strange horse. <laughs> I don't know where this analogy is going. I don't know where it was going either. But it's. Do we think that ratings in that bad of a state right now? Because the article, which obviously is always, we'll put in the notes does talk about how, really, this is just another nail in Wales coffin, that even the hardcore players are just finding it a bit too lacklustre in terms of ratings, so, it's so much so that they've got split up just to have a bit of a challenge now. I mean, do you think well, that's well, fair? Most people have been saying that a lot of the recent rating is some of the best rating mm. there's been. Yeah, I, I, I think, think it's, it's just a, Yeah, I think it's just a matter of the game is getting older. Um... Mm. And the, so the, the mindset, the mindset of people that will sit there—it's kind of mentioned in this article a little bit—that will keep attempting a boss after like over 450 deaths. Not many people are willing to do that, and the people that were willing to do that are getting older now. They have other stuff going on with jobs and families and everything, and the younger group coming up just don't have the interest in WoW that that the others do you know they're doing other games they're playing minecraft and league of legends and you know, these these newer games um instead yeah and it, so th basically what all of this is pointing to is that world of warcraft is dying yeah it's dead <laughs> again again no but it's died um, like 800 times by now but not necessarily that world of warcraft is dying but could the whole competitive rating scene actually uh potentially die maybe i mean like I'm not saying raiding in general is going to die out but maybe this whole idea of just like the world first the big race could that potentially die out i think zul had a point i think i think it's not going to die i think it's just going to change and adapt yeah i mean i'd say the word evolve probably um without sounding a bit cliche i think this is the natural evolution of raiding and i think you guys picked up a good point that it's not, it's not so much the game getting older for this article it's that the communities and the guilds involved are getting older and like you said Zul there you know you hang out with the same bunch of people 10 years you're gonna probably want something a little bit fresh something a little bit different I mean they talk about the strange relationships in leadership and that people are motivated by different factors well if that's the case then call it time go your separate ways and you know, see how you guys can adapt to a different environment. Because, like you say, raiding has been the best probably it has ever been. The the raids have been so well tuned. They've been engaging, and I haven't heard a single thing say that raiding has cost WoW anything at all. So, I I really think that them going off and doing their own thing is probably, if anything, a good sign in that there's still people who are willing to, whilst sort of end you know put method aside they're willing to still go at it in this new guild serenity and that's that's encouraging that you know in, in a sense they're not gone they're just trying something new and that's what i'd rather see than two expansions from now they go yeah actually no we've all gone to wild star or something like that you know or some other mmo because that's the worst thing is when these hardcore guilds start actually going elsewhere rather than just shaking things up a bit Very i guess <laughs> I, I agree <laughs> I would like to point out that uh, uh, Britta, while you were making, uh, while you were talking there, uh, you got a marriage proposal actually in the uh, Twitch chat. Yes! Yay! Uh, so you said Yay. yes. There you go. There, there you go, uh, Cat Minecrafter. <laughs> uh, he said yes. In exchange for mounts. Um, <laughs> but was there anything else in terms of raiding that we uh, we wanted to talk about? I mean, just the, the general state of raiding, or Legion obviously hasn't revealed too much about its raiding. Right. changes really well I, I i assume blizzard's gonna keep up the good work with raiding in legion and i don't know i think maybe them splitting up could be a good thing maybe having another team uh having another raid team i because i i've always enjoyed watching the world first race thing it's it's always been cool to watch so i'd hate to see it go away and of course next year we're entering it's gonna be us three and seven bots uh, <laughs> right so <laughs> we're just gonna go in see how we do Ten Death Knights, that would do it, shouldn't it? Not right, I think. Well, yeah, ten Unholy Death Knights. Ten Unholy Death Knights. <laughs> yeah. Because then we also have pets, so it's really like 20 of us. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on to the next bit of news, unless anyone has anything else to cover there. Nope. Nope. No, nope. I think that's right. good. So, <clears throat> it is official now, everyone. The Warcraft movie is being planned as... 
a TV show. <gasps> just kidding. Just kidding. Wait. It's being <laughs> being planned as a trilogy. Shock. What's a shock? <laughs> this is a great what that name for? Um <laughs> Uh, basically, just being confirmed here on this uh, crossmap.com, a uh, little article about it. Director Duncan Jones planning a Warcraft trilogy, commanded Daniel Wu in his portrayal of Ghoul. Dan commanded. Commanded? Yeah, commanded. 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 Uh, Daniel Wu in his portrayal of Ghoul. Dan. Um, go over that here. There's a bit of an interview. <clears throat> when it comes to. Uh, hmm. Where should I start off here? As you can tell, this is my first time reading this article as well. <laughs> Do you want me to take it? Yes, please. Okay, so um, just to go through the article quickly, it just it just confirms that Warcraft is still in post production, um, still CGIing the uh, the something out of it, and um, Duncan Jones was talking about different aspects of the Warcraft movie. So he was talking about the special effects to start off with. So he said there are many complicated special effects in the movie that it will take a while longer before the film will be complete. Special effects will be very impressive though. They're being done by ILM. I don't know what ILM. Apparently they're known Industrial for Industrial their... Light and Magic. Ah, there we go. Yeah. See? <laughs> ah. Um, who are best known for their work on the Star Wars movies. So um, does that mean they're not working on the Star Wars movies? They are at the same time. Uh, that's good, I guess. Um, so <laughs> confirmed, lightsabers in the new Warcraft movie. I was going to say they're going to accidentally slip in like lightsabers, and you'll see an X-wing fly by in the background of a battle. Yeah. <laughs> Chewbacca's in the background. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's just a torrent. Don't worry. Uh, he also was talking about Daniel Wu, who is playing Gul'dan in the movies, and um, and he was saying that Daniel has definitely put his own stamp on the character. And that is how it should be. You don't get, you don't hire great actors to crush their individuality by forcing them into a mold you have in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm being very careful because apparently this article is spoilers, so I will avoid the spoilers if they do pop up. Um, you find a way to blend the character and the man. You get a performance that is rooted in something that is honest to them. But of course, there is a lot of expectation for Warcraft and an audience that has a sh has strong ideas on who and what the characters should be. This is a good challenge, and I know one Daniel was excited to take up. And he goes on to say that it's very important. He's he had one very important fan of the game to impress his wife, um, which is quite incredible because his wife's like a millionaire heiress. Um, she's played Warcraft for a long time and, and was very serious that she that he get called on just right. So or else she was going to leave him. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you better get that would be a disaster. Right. Yeah. Um, then he talks about Andrew and Lothar. Um, uh, who plays Ragnar Lothbrok in the TV series Vikings? Just in case yeah, same guy knows. playing both awesome. characters. And um, mm -hmm. he said that Warcraft is very motion capture orientated. This is still Duncan Jones, by the way, yeah. and special effects orientated. And we wear costumes that I couldn't get through the door with all the armor. You can't lift your arms above your head with that on. But Vikings is a bit more natural <laughs> with uh, the fighting. And um, so, and so he's saying that Warcraft has unnatural mm. fighting. Yes, yeah, it does. I mean, you, you've seen the shoulder pads, <laughs> right? Uh, well, I mean, you look at the game; everybody just swings their sword in the same direction for several minutes, mm -hmm. and then something dies. So, I'm assuming the movie's going to be the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it. Have, the, every single move is just an exact copy of the animations yep. from the game, and whoever they're fighting has a health bar over their head. That'd be brilliant. My phone made I'd love to see that. And see stun effects and then people using cooldowns. Yep. Like when they use they use their heroic charges, they uh have a little icon, a debuff top. You see top some guy in the background like moving his hands in a circle because he's actually her stoning back, like out of the fight. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just disappears. <laughs> Or gets run over. Alright, so on to the, the last uh, section. On, on to the last here. bit, the juice <laughs> of the article, which is you yep. revealed that there are more Warcraft movies in the future. Mm -hmm. He said Peter Jackson uh, did a magnificent job and made a lot of money, that's my own point, uh, of setting the table for Tolkien's universe with his first Lord of the Rings film. I know that my job in this first film is to establish certain characters, places and culture whilst telling a story that a broad audience can be excited by. Hopefully, if I've done my job right, people will want to know and see more. 
There is certainly plenty more to tell. I would love to be part of that process of expanding on the lore that makes up Warcraft, but it will all depend on what you, the audience, think of our first film. And without going into it, he says that um, they are planning on making a Warcraft... They were planning, yeah, no, sorry, someone asked if they were planning on making a Warcraft 3, so a third film that is. Um, <laughs> got confused there for a second. And he said he would personally love to. He's worked apparently quite closely with Chris Metzen, um, and he said that he'd love to get a chance to do another three films and wants to be the guy to deliver that. So whilst he's promising three films, he is saying he wants to make sure that everything's yeah, properly somewhere. established in the first one. Mm. So that's probably a good thing, but... Yeah, I mean, it's going to make a bucket load of money if it does three right. films, that's for certain. Well, I, I'm pretty certain that people will like the first one. I mean, the first one could be a train wreck, it is possible, but pretty sure it will be a fan favorite and they will make it. Three. Yeah. Uh, this just in real quick, uh, literally this just in, StarCraft Two: Legacy of the Void will be released on November 10th. Ooh, November 10th? Yes. But when's BlizzCon? November 6th and 7th. Jeez, they've actually done a release close to it is th this. If uh, anybody's been paying attention, it is the unfortunately the release date of Fallout Four as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then the week after that, November twentieth, that's the release date for Marvel's next Netflix series, Jessica Jones. So, oh, well, sorry, Starcraft's going to be a fan. Sorry, now. Starcraft, I might not be playing you at that time. But... November is going to be busy. Yeah. November is going to be... I mean, because Star Wars Battlefront also comes out that month as well. Ah, oh, crap. I know. Uh, oh. Back back onto Warcraft. Just just had to throw that out there because that literally just got announced three minutes ago. Um, but yeah, I, the, just reading this article, three three Warcraft movies. Mm. Are we excited by the prospect of three Warcraft movies? I, I want endless Warcraft movies, just like I want endless right, Warcraft exactly. expansions. <laughs> See, I want them. I want them to do the Warcraft movies like they're doing the Star Wars movies, where you alternate every other year, where you have <laughs> one that continues the story, and then you have like a one-off that tells a separate story. Because then we could go back and have like different stories here and there. Oh, here's the Disney War of Eternity. Disney needs to buy this it. franchise. Disney. <laughs> <laughs> or I mean, so our Blizzard needs to buy Disney. Show, and then <laughs> our other show, Let's Talk Geekdom, has basically become a Disney show because the only things we talk about are Marvel and Star Wars. So we basically, get sponsorship scene from Disney. I hope so. Disney, buy me. I mean, us. The show. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> buy me. I mean, just to get your guys' opinion, let's say the Warcraft movie does really well, and they say, "Yep, let's sign them up for another two films." This one's addressing the the Second War. Um, what would you want to see? I thought this addressed... movie was addressing the first war. Oh, was it the first war? Sorry, yeah, one of is... one of the wars. Um, what would you want to see addressed in the second and third film? And I guess all, so, if you taking your point, if you were going to see one or two spin-off films, what would you like to see from those? Because obviously we're quite far in the past now. Would you want to see a case of, you know, the Warcraft movie tracking the wars, as it were, and you have a spin-off movie where you look at Medivh or I don't know, may, would you want to see them put one of the Warcraft 3 storylines into movie form, like Illidan versus Arthas in the Race of the Lich King? See, I'd go back to, like, the, uh... What about, like, the War of the, War Ancients? Of the Ancients? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That would be cool. That's That would be fun. Mm -hmm. That would be, actually, yeah, good to see. Yep. Uh, War of the Ancients movie, or... Yeah, I I don't know if they necessarily need to cover like the second war either because it's kind of redundant. <laughs> it's basically the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> they I, do the exact same thing again and they fail again. I, I would like to see you know Warcraft the first movie be about the first war and then go right to the cataclysm. I wouldn't mind. I'd, I'd, I'd just, <laughs> I'd I'd love just to straight to <laughs> straight to the. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna skip Warcraft three and an Arthas story, and then all, the... <laughs> and then Illidan and. No, actually, I think the Arthas story would actually make a great one to go right to the Warcraft three story after the first movie. I think that would be yeah. a really good place to go to. But I want it told from the perspective of like a lowly peon. I don't want to see Arthas' story. I want to see, I want to see like, I don't know, Arthur. The uh, the under <laughs> the under explained <laughs> adventures of Arthur the peon. 
Loyal follower of Arthas. I see. <laughs> he seems to be going a little crazy. <laughs> quark, quark. Um, well, that's the orcs, isn't it? Um, but, okay, on another note then, we've got the Warcraft movies that say it's going to be that trilogy. What's... I guess, what other things would you want to see coming out of this? I mean, do we want to see a TV series floating around as well? I, I, would, guess I, I would like to see these movies get popular enough to generate uh, the want. I, I've said this on previous episodes too, but I'd like to see this generate uh, the kind of want for something like this from other Blizzard franchises, like something from Diablo or something from StarCraft, you know, in the film a or Diablo TV. A Diablo TV series. It would be incredible. Oh, boy. An animated uh, series based off the characters of Overwatch, because you know that they're just the cutscene for that was so much like a Disney film. Yes, that is a Disney. <laughs> yep. Wait, <time. laughs> yep. And then eventually, after like a decade of all these different movies and TV Heroes shows, Heroes of the Storm movie. Human... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nova and Malfurion team up to I don't know. Blizzard's really just going to convert into a movie studio once World of Warcraft dies. Because they're sick and tired of dealing with us, right? Gamers. Do you guys think though that the films or like any other media, so films, TV series, do you think they'd ever do cover a story that wasn't covered in a novel, in game, or you know, in WoW? Do you think Blizzard would say, "Listen, we want to do a story that's completely original, and no one knows anything about these events. Just let's make some films about it." Or well, TV they series. already have like a half orc, half human in this movie that has nothing to do with anything everyone has ever seen before. Um, they they were talking about it at BlizzCon. She's a new character, completely new character. Uh, I don't know oh, how right. that works. She's half orc though, and uh... wasn't well, so, I think one of Medi was it Medivh's kids was isn't that oh, I think that's the orc. I don't know. I th I'm pretty I sure Medivh had a half. I don't know. Can't remember. But, they, but they've, <laughs> they've already made one character for this movie who's mm. just completely new to the Warcraft universe, so I can see them doing that, like a story arc that's that's new. But it's still canon, isn't it? They're still saying yeah, it's still considering canon, story. yeah. Because I don't want to be sitting out there in the movie theaters going, it's not canon! <laughs> sitting there with all my books laid out in front of me trying to find the references. But um, anything else on the movie? That's all. all right, I think we can move uh, on to no. the next thing. All right. So there's another interview coming out about Legion. Um, I believe still probably just another one that got rounded up from the Gamescom set of mm -hmm. interviews. But uh, this one is from Game Reactor. And the highlights include a few things here that we'll cover. Uh, being one of them, uh, the idea for Legion started 2.5 to 3 years ago. And the Warcraft team debated which expansion would come first, Warlords or Legion. Oh. <laughs> uh, just, just that point right there is kind of... Hmm. It frustrates... That honestly frustrates me so much. <laughs> but they they thought about which one was better and saved the best till last. Oh. Let, let's hope that's the case. If Legion's not oh, yeah. as good as Warlords, <laughs> <I hope> so. <laughs> we're in that's trouble. As players, we're in trouble. Sign expansions. It's not a case of you you come up with two ideas and going, yeah, we have that one. We will work on this one. That's not fair. I, I, I'm sure they probably just looked at it from a story perspective. Probably. Um, let's hope so. Anyway. <laughs> Can you imagine if we were about to go into Warlords? Well, I mean, think about where <laughs> three years ago was when Miss of Pandaria came out. Three years ago. Two, that was two years was ago. Only... Three? No, that was three. Two. What year is it? <laughs> yeah, no, you are right. Yeah, I three years ago. What year is it? Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> so three years ago, Miss of Pandaria came out, uh, and you know that also that kind of makes sense. You know, they had all that introductory stuff with uh, Rathian talking about the Burning Legion invasion, and all that. So it kind of makes sense why that was on the table mm -hmm. to possibly come up next. Do you think we still would have got Demon Hunters if Legion had gone first? Who knows? Who knows? Only Blizzard does. <laughs> uh, so over time, uh, the team is trying to tie expansions together. Example, Garrosh and Siege of Ogremar leading into Warlords, Gul'dan and Hellfire uh, leading, Citadel leading into Legion. I guess that's how that works out. Uh, looking at that point there in the interview. 
I guess we should have just read one, one line further. to another. <laughs> That's their plot time devices. An orc will go from one place to another, <laughs> and that protects all the expansions. And they're good. Mm. Uh, I have some weird thing happening right now. Whenever I hit my desk, my monitor shuts off for a second. I need to re stop it. Oh. <laughs> Stop hitting your right. desk. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So reading the next point, Legion has a departure from Orc Decor. Yes, uh, Night Elves haven't been explored Ooh. for a while, and made sense to return to it. Thankfully, I think they they said during Gamescom everyone's had a bit too much Orc lately, which we can agree mm. to. <laughs> Tasty. Yes. Uh, artifacts are the ultimate progression system to customize weapons and abilities. They allow players at max level to keep progressing on a path. It keeps the world interesting and rewarding. Um, which is cool. I think that's uh, one of the main reasons why I'm excited uh, for artifacts. Anyway. Um, the team is always focusing on how to present co uh, content better. There's a ton of content, but it could be more replayable, more social, and more rewarding. Um, just kind of like Warlords. There was some great content introduced right off the mm -hmm. bat, but where was the replayability? Where was the reward for going out there? So... I think that's what they're looking at at Legion. Um, Warlords had a very successful <laughs> expansion launch. Um, uh, maybe it not as far, as far as servers go. Uh, subscriber numbers, returning players. That's probably yeah, that's what they meant, <laughs> not servers. Uh, mm. But the team has to work on delivering content in long term. At least they are yeah. acknowledging their problem. Um, and Legion is an is an internal alpha at Blizzard Office. And they are preparing for beta, which will be the long process, which more changes due to public testing and feedback. Um, so, yeah, that, 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 that's basically it for that interview there. Good points, though. What do you guys think? I want more information. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to know what the artifact weapons will be for the other specs. That's really, like, the main thing I want to know, because they're cool. I was going to say that... Oh, sorry, Tony, go on. Well, I'm expecting a, a big, uh, a big sit-down uh, conference at BlizzCon specifically about. All right, here's a whole bunch of stuff you don't know about Legion. Mm. That's, yeah, that's obviously, there's gonna, they're gonna have a ton of stuff. They're gonna have, they're probably gonna have like an overall like update on it. They'll probably have panels about specific things. Like it wouldn't surprise me if they have a panel about artifact weapons. Right, and I mean did, that's it. Did Just we discuss like, adventure mode last week? Britza, I don't remember. Did you and I discuss Adventure Mode? Uh, I think we mentioned it. I can't remember like, what we said on it. Uh, it. Basically, like it got tweeted out, just the word Adventure Mode. That's all I'm going to say. More at BlizzCon. Like, oh, what? <sighs> Adventure Mode? I would oh, never yeah. leave Warcraft. I would never leave Warcraft. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I'm really hoping to hear more about that. Hopefully that's a thing. And they've Please already... let it be like Diablo's Adventure Mode. Oh my gosh. I think that's what we said. We're hoping... <laughs> It does oh make sense my right gosh, away. that would be am amazing! Absolutely amazing. So, so we're really, really hoping for that. Uh, but I mean, anything else about this interview stand out to you guys? I just think they're they're doing a good job of, of well, doing what they said they're trying to do, which is limit information and manage expectations. They're not saying anything's going to be coming necessarily too soon. Like even that comment about the beta, they said it's going to be a long process. Don't expect this thing soon. Um, you know, base is not going to be coming out till at least the late end of this year, mm. and you know we won't see launch until a little while after that. But just to throw it out to you guys, I've I've heard a lot of people talking on YouTube and through other podcasts saying exactly what you said, so I want more information, and I just wonder, looking at this now, and like you said, Tidy, we're not going to hear really anything until BlizzCon, or at least we hope we're going to hear a lot of BlizzCon. Mm. But do you think Blizzard's kind of in some sense made a mistake announcing the expansion before blizzcon do you think it would be much better to say we are working on it and we will tell you we will announce the next expansion at blizzcon and just left it at that rather than tell people what the expansion is like they did and now there's just this huge appetite for information that they're not going to satisfy because there's so much people want to know and the problem is is whether it's us or other people i've seen on youtube everyone is saying the same thing we're talking about this thing non-stop and yet we'll always end the show with but we'll see, we'll see when it comes, or when we get more information. And I just wonder whether there's just they they shot themselves in the foot, maybe, because we want to know so much about it, and we're we're digesting every little word that comes out. But yeah. um, do you think it was wrong? 
It, I, I think it it depends on when they're gonna release things. If it, if it's not coming out for a long time, then yeah, they maybe should they should have just waited. But uh, if they really aren't going to give any more information to BlizzCon, then you're also right that we're all just kind of like we want more information, and Blizzard's not gonna give us anything, which is kind of frustrating. But maybe maybe we'll get more tidbits of information between here and BlizzCon. Um, like maybe start getting some some stuff on the I don't know some stuff on the blog but you're right though i think they may have shot themselves in the foot by announcing it as early as they did without following up with more information what about easel any thoughts on it or how would you um kind of the the same that you guys said uh they need to keep releasing at least little tidbits from here Mm -hmm. on out but if they release too much then what are they going to talk about at blizzcon so (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, you know, and little Blizzcon things. Still, Blizzcon's just little still, months. you know, just under two months away. I mean, how are we going to come up with two months of actually. shows? Two months worth of shows. How are we going to do it? We'll find a way. We'll find a way. We will become geeks of Blizzard. <laughs> See, there you go. There <laughs> it is. It's creeping in slowly. There it is. <laughs> On another note, have you guys geeks seen... Geeks of medicine. <laughs> geeks of medicine. <laughs> um... Have you guys seen the uh, the ghost crawler Easter egg? That's just a bit further down this article. Uh, what they've confirmed in the PTR, um, it was something that was added during Mr. Pandaria. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's a flippable table, and what apparently it does is um, it's a toy. It costs forty nam iron pore, and what it does is it's um, it's based on the fact that Ghost Crawler once said that he was going to nerf um, Rep Pallies to the ground, baby, uh, shortly before the uh, those nerfs hit Pallies pretty hard. So what you can do is, if you're any other class other than the Rep Pally, you can just flip this table. It just It's a toy, it forms a table, when you go and click it, and it flips the table. But if you're a Rep Pally, a little crap which represents Ghost Crawler's avatar is on the table when you flip it. <laughs> well, seen, um, I, someone it's all paladins because someone that was a oh, protection paladin confirmed it happened for them too oh yeah yeah um and it's only a low percentage that it might happen like it doesn't happen every time it's there's a oh, chance yeah. that when it when the table like pops up for you to flip there'll be a crab on it and you flip it and it goes flying off poor ghost crawler <laughs> oh. i think that's awesome <laughs> hilarious i just worry that maybe there's going to be more of these sort of punching bag toys <laughs> as the stress <laughs> builds up yeah they might have to add more <laughs> anything else on legion or whatnot no but i think we can move on to the discussion of the week and then he sweep down from above I tell ya, you, you should have seen the size of those wangs. <laughs> I swear, Boron's axe could hardly cut through a gnome. <laughs> What's a drena anyhow? Can I drink it? Discussion of the week. That's right, it's time for the discussion of the week. And this week we are going to be discussing... Should Blizzard do more to incorporate the lore found in graphics and side novels into the main story of WoW. Zul, take it away! I absolutely think they should. (laughs) I think it would be awesome if out in the game world you could find ways to experience, explore, or learn about all those other stories and the lore and the background and history of everything. I don't know how they would do it, but it would be really cool to be able to go out there and find that information in game. Yeah, man, I, re- I really got it. Like, I got a kick out of it when I was playing through the Negran storyline and found um, Garrosh's uh, shackles out there, which was totally yeah. from the book, from the War yep. Crimes book. Um, I would love to see more of that, more than just like a little item on the ground. I would love to see full continuations or. Like, there should be destruction up at the Temple of the White Tiger now, where the uh, trial happened, but it's not there. It should be. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Britsa, I believe your microphone is turned off. So it is. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, I guess 
one of the things that made me think about this topic was that in particular war crimes is such a huge part of the story mm -hmm. but i've never read war crimes i'm tempted to read it now although be it's probably a bit late um but it just made me wonder about how much of you know how how much law there is in these novels that probably a very small part of the player base actually read um like for example i mean we you've got the war of the ancients and if anyone's ever uh watched uh noble 87's channel he, he does a fantastic job of summing up the law but he said that what effectively legion is doing is it's retconning the war of the ancients novels because we're doing stuff in legion that happened in those novels but we're doing them now as opposed to thousands of years in the past or whenever in the past um so in that sense we're living the law of those stories but at the same time, um, Storm Rage, which dealt with it um, pre cata post Wrath of the Lich King issues, the Shattering, um, we kind of saw through Kata, but at the same time, some of the story was missed. Um, and some of the stuff surrounding, you know, Vol'jin and Shadow of the Horde, Jaina Proudmoore's Tide to War. I just wonder if there's so much lore tied up in these novels that we're just not able to see. And I, it sort of echoing Zul. I think I'd really love to see it. And I, I I don't know how you do it, like whether you, you could do better to incorporate them into questing zones uh, and take a bit more time to, or maybe have like, you know, particular quest chains for those characters. Like Jaina could have a quest chain which sort of delves into the events that she went through. Mm -hmm. And you have to, I don't know how you do it, like maybe with Tides of War, you had to pick through the pieces of Theramore with her and kill off orcs and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Or they could just be really cheesy and just make it cabinets of time. Yeah. Zones. That, that's the only other way I can think of doing it. But What they could do is in Dalaran, they could build a library and actually have all the novels and graphics novels and just put them in the game. Have you be able to read them in the game. And there you're getting exactly what the discussion topic's about, the, the books in the game. That would be amazing, if not a crazy financial decision by Blizzard. Um, possibly. I mean, like, I'd, I'd like... Do you remember like back in Vanilla and Burning Crusade where you did find those books sitting around? Like, I remember the... Um, oh, what was it? The... You know that room in Stormwind Keep where all the honor... Uh, the... Court, oh, what was it? The Battleground Masters used to be. And there were a couple of books there that really went into the background of like, I think one of them went into the background of Medivh and another one went into the background of like the Orc clan history and things like that. And they were actually quite interesting to read and some of them were actually really, really long. So I, I'd like to maybe see something like that in Legion with Dalaran. Like you could actually read a lot of the lore just by hanging out in the library. That'd be pretty cool. Albeit be in the abridged version. Or alternatively, you could have them like... Uh, uh, you could open up a book and have the, you know, an audio version of the law, like by Gilbert Gottfried or something like that. That would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Who plays the voice of Iago in Aladdin, if anyone's curious. <laughs> that might be cool. <laughs> or do you know? I, Tim <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just, as far as this topic goes, I can't really think of many solutions, I guess, to the problem, aside from, you know, simply putting the events in the game through, like, time walking or the, the caverns of time, some way like that. It's, it'd be very hard, I guess, to go back and incorporate this stuff. Do you guys ever feel like you're missing out on the story, though? Do you think the player base ever feels like it's missing out on the story? I don't, because I read the books. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, just me then just me but okay so you read the books and i don't read the books right do you think i have a limited experience compared to you do you think i'm missing out uh, yeah i mean like yeah because of like how major the events were in war crimes for example um mm. it, you do miss out on a lot of things that happen if you don't read the book and especially because the game does yes. not go into detail and they actually explain a lot of what happened during that trial um, yep. so much happened with Jaina and sylvanas yes. in that book mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. both of them got had so much happen to them and it has not been explained in the game so uh, when people like, outside the game talk about, yeah, Sylvanas is kind of going crazy right now, or Jaina's losing her mind, or she's giving up the Kirin Tor, 
Well, people don't know why, because it's not in the game, it's all in that book. I have heard a lot. Like, I know what happens with Sylvanas and her sister. Yep. Um, can't remember which and now one, her but... other sister's coming back in Legion. I mean, ah, oh, she's going to go nuts. <laughs> she is going to go nuts. And, and Jaina, and like you say, I, I think a lot of people say Jaina's gone mental. Like, there's a lot of criticism at the end of Siege when Jaina's saying, oh, you know, dismantle the Horde. Yeah. And she should have done. But um, well, what happens with that. her in that book? She kind of, you know, she realizes mm. that she's, you know, that she, that Gar the Horde is bad and not whatever. But yeah, uh, a lot yeah. happens with her and her blue dragon boyfriend in that book. And <laughs> it's <laughs> just, there's a lot that are, that's missed out in that book. I mean, a lot of the other books, you know, you can catch up on in lore quest lines. It's a lot of past events or mm -hmm. um, it, do it doesn't necessarily impact the game at all. So as far as what you need to know to play it but is that a sign from blizzard that they need to put more in the game as far as storytelling or is that a sign that people should read the books or they should stop telling as much of the story in the books I don't... Mm. It, it's an interesting way to look at it i guess i guess as well because i've got two of the um two of the graphic novel mm -hmm. um graphic novels sorry um which go into the backstory of varian mm-hmm and the thing is, unless you read those, you don't really understand what Varian went through when he got amnesia. When he and was in the, the arena. When he was in the arena. Yeah. Um, you know, he, people probably don't realize how he got that scar across his face and things <laughs> like that. They just think, he, you know, he's just been in a couple of fights. No, it, there's a whole backstory to that. Um, and when he, you know, was teaming up with his blood elf and orc friends, um, there was a lot to it. So... I think in particular, I think you've brought up a good point, Tali, that our perception of these characters, even going into Legion, where the stakes are pretty high, are, are shaped by what we have and haven't read. And I'd, I'd hate to be in a, a situation myself where, like, I see all of these things happen to Jaina, but I haven't read the stuff that puts the right spin on it, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I, I think, like, sometimes I do feel like I've missed out um, on the, the so whole... So go read. I should read <laughs> right now. That's time. Right now, all of them without stopping. Maybe I should read like yeah, <laughs> while I'm in Ashran queues and things like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's what it comes down to. At the end of the day, the books are there if you want to read them. If you don't, then you don't see that part of the story. That's the obvious right. outcome of this discussion. But I mean, and, and, like I, I still think of the Arthas book is probably my favorite mm -hmm. one, and uh, that literally just retells the entire story of Warcraft Three. <laughs> pretty mm -hmm. much just from Arthas's perspective only um, which is pretty cool and you know I like that book because you can either play the game and experience or read the book and experience it um, is that the one where he uh he gets pretty close to Jaina yep they they yep. have their special fun time in the book special yeah, fun time get, that, <laughs> that's not in the game not in the game people oh, so boy. read the book <laughs> it is in the what Warcraft 3 mod though <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, no, that's just it as well. You don't, you, you, you just think like looking at Warcraft three. I just thought, you know, Jaina and Arthas did have that connection, but you don't realize how close they got until you get into that backstory and realize that, and and also you don't see the, you don't realize the backstory. Like Kelthas yeah. was in love with Jaina mm -hmm. and saw Jaina kissing Arthas, and that's why he went ballistic at Arthas. That's the other reason he hates Arthas. So, you know, there's all that as well. But, yeah, so I guess I've got to go read. So I better start getting on Amazon yep. now and order all this stuff. All right. So that's about it for that discussion topic, unless anybody has anything else to add. Nope. Nope. All right. Yeah. So moving on to... What's that? Oh, yes. Prince's Gaze. We haven't done this one in a while. <laughs> Welcome back, Hero of the Alliance. How fares the battle along the coast? Suffering from amnesia, he fought for his life in Horde arenas. Let us see if your alliance has what it takes to rule Azeroth. Your Horde finds itself at a turning point. This war will define you. The Prince's Gaze. Tom, fetch my things. That's right, it's time for the Prince's Gaze, where we gaze out into the community, find something we like, and talk about it. Well, that was the most that was the most accurate description of the prince's gaze i think i've come yeah. up with so far you actually said what it is <laughs> <laughs> it's only taken 50 odd shows <laughs> well brilliant the first thing we have to talk about 
is a 3D printed black hand warhammer from World of Warcraft that glows. Mm -hmm. It glows. We're gonna <laughs> I'll, uh, put this up on the screen for the live stream viewers. This thing is incredible. Uh, Prince or Zul, one of you guys want to talk about this in more detail? You want to do Zul, or shall I? Go for it. Go for it. So, um, just to make a long story short, so I realize we're going on for a little while now, but um, a Finnish um, gamer by the name of Serabin, uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, has been experimenting with some sort of lighting, glowy things to put in. Co not, it's not cosplay weapon, but it's you know that that sort of three um, D weapon. And um, I don't know what PD, PETG stands for, so uh, apologies for not being technical. But basically. Um, they've been able to use a 3D printer and this PETG filament to create, as you said, Tali, a glowing um, recreation of Black Hand's hammer. And it looked absolutely incredible. Um, I don't, I'm just trying to see how long it took to make. I mean, it doesn't really go into detail how long it took. Sorry, Tali, you can say. Well, 3D printings typically take anywhere from four hours to a day. And I would suggest yeah. this one took probably at least a day to print together which is i mean i want a 3d printer they're so cool the stuff that people are coming up with these yep. days and this mm -hmm. is awesome very cool it's absolutely incredible i mean go on so sorry what do you think of it yeah i i think it's really cool i think um this is a good example i think 3d printing is gonna make uh as it becomes more accessible and more people are able to get things done and the price continues to drop Mm -hmm. It's going to make doing really awesome cosplays more and more accessible to people, which is really cool. Guys, you can go out right now and buy yourself a 3D printer from your local Best Buy. That's how accessible it's getting. And I've just found it now as well. <laughs> it took a two hours to design it um, for the 3D printer, and it took almost a four days worth of printing to complete. But... Like you say, Tali, I think this is the way that things like this are going to go. Mm. I think in a couple of years, when 3D printing people have that stuff, you'll be able just to download the designs and print off frost morns, war glaives, goodness knows what. And that'd be absolutely incredible. But it looks amazing. There's just so much glow in the dark weaponry floating around now from Warcraft. It seems to be the case if it doesn't glow, it you don't do it. <laughs> so definitely a good job to the guys who made that hammer. Mm -hmm. And then... As well, another thing we're pointing out this week is actually directly from uh, the World of Warcraft blog, uh, their community spotlight for a guy named, uh, calls himself Puzzlehead. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> he has made a full-on alliance shield. And I'm going to pull this up here on the screen. This thing is absolutely incredible. It looks massive, too. Uh, just the amount of work. He also made um, a gnomish mailbox. <laughs> Yes, we can see that right there next to an actual post office box. This is <laughs> pretty incredible. I, I I need one of those outside of my house. <laughs> right? Be amazing. Absolutely amazing. And these are metal. Yep. He he went through the full you know the full works of what it takes to build something like this. Jeez. I wonder if it looks more authentic than the stuff they're using for the Warcraft movie. <laughs> Uh, but here, directly on uh, the Warcraft uh, blog, there is a link, a uh, direct link to his Twitter. You can see it's uh, at Puzzlehead84. Uh, you can get more information about the stuff he creates there. But really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Anything else you guys think about it? No. Nope. I'll post the links in the show notes for anyone who wants to check it out. And Zul, anything else? No, I think that's good. All right, so time for the last segment of the show. It's time for Heroes, Heroes Call. Call. Yes. The Heroes Call, where we give shout-outs uh, to anybody we would like to. Uh, today, I'd like to give a shout-out to everybody who's been in the chat room. Thank you very much for participating Woo. in the show. Fun stuff. What about you, <laughs> Zul? Any shout-outs? I do not have any specific shout-outs today. Fine. Fine. You, first time back in the show and you have no shout outs. Okay. Brits. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you guys for keeping it going. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> You're well, we, uh, I, I yeah. can't believe we. I, th I thought we weren't gonna make it without you, honey. But thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm shocked you did. <laughs> you complained about being stuck with me. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Ritza? Uh, no, just the, the the shout as always to uh, people listening uh, at home or in their cars or wherever you are listening. Uh, it's great. We're show fifty two. <laughs> On that way to a hundred. Almost Ooh. there. Almost there. <laughs> <laughs> we're nowhere near <laughs> <laughs> oh we're halfway there <laughs> alright well everyone thank you very much uh, for listening to the show uh, we are always available on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube and Twitch you can check us out on Twitter at Geeks of Azeroth you can find me personally at Tarly underscore pause where can we find you Zool? you can find me at Zool Geek and what about you Britza? You can find me at Britza underscore EG. And of course, you can always send your love, your hate, your your just un overwhelming joy that the Zool is back on the show. Send all of that to geeksofazerothEG at gmail.com. Definitely send questions. We'd love to answer viewer questions on the show. Um, and also check out www.epicgeeks.co.uk for all the other shows these guys put out. Uh, these guys, these other two guys, plus their awesome new co-host who i always forget the name of every week um they have this rc 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 has this um, they, they have this awesome show called let's talk geekdom where they talk specifically about marvel and star wars uh, <laughs> i think they're supposed to talk about other geek things but th that's mainly what those tend to about. dominate <laughs> definitely check that show out they they're awesome uh as well as geeks of nexus the geek show talking purely about uh the game wildstar i almost forgot the name of that yes mm -hmm. i'm forgetting the name of everything. which is going free to play uh, at the end of this month very soon guys so definitely check that out if you have no idea how to play wildstar those guys will teach you so mm -hmm. yep www.epicgeeks.co.uk otherwise uh check us out here same time same place next week everyone have a great week in azura boy yar <laughs>